Welcome to the NWAETC Project ECHO. I'm Kent Unruh, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Brian Wood, our medical director, to introduce our guest. Well, happy Halloween, everyone, and I'd like to thank Bob Harrington for coming back and doing another talk for us. Bob doesn't need much introduction. You guys probably know him, and just as a reminder, he is medical director for our Madison Clinic, professor of medicine here at the University of Washington, and he's going to talk today about PML. Thank you, Brian. Yes, happy Halloween. So, uh, yes, I'm gonna talk about uh, PML, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, and I thought I'd, I'd start with a case, um, a, a sad case of a, a patient that several of us, I think, uh, took care of um, over this last year. This is a 42-year-old Ethiopian woman uh, with chronic headaches who was admitted after a fall at home and uh, who complained of right-sided weakness and numbness for the past few days. On arrival at the Harborview ER, she was febrile and seized. Her HIV test uh, was eventually positive. Her T cells were quite low at 42. A toxoantibody was positive. And her MR uh, showed this large left parietal lesion, and uh, you can't see it very well on this cut, so I apologize for that, but she also had a smaller right-sided parietal enhancing nodule. So the initial read of the MR scan was that it looked like toxo more than anything else, so she was started on antitoxotherapy with uh, pyrimethamine, leucovorin, and sulfadiazine, and initially got better, um, uh, was discharged and then uh, readmitted with worsening uh, uh, fever, rash, elevated liver function test, a high eosinophil count, and was thought to have uh, DRESS uh, due to sulfasalazine with an amnestic uh, reaction responsible for her progressive neurological symptoms. Re repeat imaging showed a decrease in the size of her right parietal lesion and an increase in the size of her left parietal lesion. So her therapy was changed to pyrimethamine clindamycin and atovaquone uh, because uh, she would then need a PCP prophylaxis. But uh, unfortunately, she continued to decline, uh, developed a dense right hemiparesis, uh, dysarthria and confusion. Uh, CSF analysis was negative for all pathogens, including JC virus and EBV. She was started on uh, antiretroviral therapy to treat HIV and uh, presumptive PML and was continued on her antitoxotherapy. She continued to decline uh, on ART alone, so she was pulsed with steroids. She, got, uh, she was on the neuro service, so got pharmacologic doses of methylprednisolone for a few days, followed by an 11-day prednisone taper. And this, unfortunately, had no effect on her clinically. Follow-up imaging showed progression of her lesion, now crossing the midline with increased contrast uh, enhancement and uh, repeat CSF analysis remained negative for all pathogens. We weren't uh, confident in any diagnosis at this time, so she underwent a brain biopsy that did uh, confirm the suspected diagnosis of PML. It showed demyelination with a cytopathic effect, and uh, immunocytochemistry was positive for SV40, which is a related polyomavirus, confirming the diagnosis of PML. So she was treated, uh, continued on her heart uh, therapy, and mirtazapine was uh, added, which we can talk about in a minute, uh, but she continued to decline, and her family uh, made the decision to transition to comfort care, and she died after only uh, two months. So um, unfortunately, not the typical course that we see with PML these days, but uh, instructive uh, uh, in, in many ways. So uh, let's, uh, let's just talk about PML. So I'll try to uh, uh, review uh, uh, a little bit about the virus, its epidemiology and risk factors, something on the pathogenesis and clinical presentation of PML, how, how we make the diagnosis, uh, and then just a couple of slides on treatment, prognosis, uh, PML iris, and some other rare JC virus-associated illnesses. A JC virus was named after the per first person from whom the virus was, was, was pulled, John Cunningham, and that was the virus was identified in 1971. It is a polyomavirus, uh, 5 KB circular structure. Most of its genome uh, is devoted to the coding of structural proteins, and there's a smaller regulatory segment that's highly variable and determines whether or not the virus is neurotropic. Most, uh, most of us are infected uh, primarily in childhood, and it's asymptomatic and then the virus will reside in kidney, bone marrow, lymphoid tissue of healthy individuals, and a third of us will shed it in urine if we look by PCR 
but it's unusual to find it in blood. The seroprevalence is uh, about 40% in the U.S. by the time you're a young adult and 65% uh, when, you, when you age. In Finland, uh, almost three-quarters of pregnant women are JC virus positive, and in Switzerland, about 70% of healthy blood donors uh, are positive. So viral isolates from the, uh, the pathogenesis is that viral isolates from the brains of people with PML include a lot of mutations and deletions, alterations of the regulatory region, and those are responsible for enhancing its replicative capacity and are probably involved in its uh, uh, neurotropism as well. The infection leads to a lytic infection of glial cells, and you need an intact uh, CTL response if you're going to control the virus and prevent PML. And in fact, in people who get PML and recover, uh, almost all of them uh, end up mounting a CTL response. Uh, those that can't do that uh, usually succumb to their, to their disease. So what about the epidemiology of PML? Well, before the HIV epidemic, it was a very rare infection. Really, we only saw it in people who were profoundly immunosuppressed, those with hemologic malignancies or transplant patients at a low incident rate of around 4 in 100,000. In the pre-ART uh, era, uh, up to 5% in some studies of HIV-infected patients eventually develop PML over the course of their illness. So kind of staggering numbers compared to the general population. In the United States, there's a study that was done uh, in the post-heart era uh, looking at 10,000 cases, not just in HIV-infected people, but 82% of those 10,000 cases occurred in HIV-infected patients with a smattering of diseases in people with other immunocompromising conditions. There are some new associations with PML, uh, and that is with natalizumab for, that's used, a uh, monoclonal antibody used for um, uh, uh, multiple sclerosis and Crohn's disease, rituximab for SLE, and then uh, I've never heard of eflizumab, uh, another monoclonal used for the treatment of psoriasis. Uh, so clinically, PML, well, because it causes this patchy demyelination of the brain, it leads to al almost everyone with PML is going to have some focality on their neuro exam. Uh, and typically, patient will present with weakness, uh, sensory deficits, hemianopsia, incoordination, and aphasias. Seizures occur in 16% of patients and behavioral, behavioral and cognitive dysfunction in almost half of patients. Unlike MS, the optic nerves and spinal cord are usually spared and that can help in the uh, diagnosis. The radiographic findings are, as I mentioned, these uh, patchy white matter subcortical uh, uh, findings that are hyper intense on T2-weighted images of MRI scans. It can also involve the cerebe cerebellar uh, ped pedicles and basal ganglia and thalamus, but that's unusual. And there usually is not enhancement or edema associated with PML. Yes, with PML iris, but uh, with PML by itself, usually not. The differential, the radiographic differential, includes just HIV, nonspecific HIV, white matter changes, CMV, VZV, multiple sclerosis, vasculitis, and uh, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. The diagnosis, well, the definitive diagnosis requires a biopsy, and there is this classic triad of bizarre astrocytes, which can be seen here, these uh, uh, nuclear inclusions seen here, and then this is a, a larger view showing the demyelination that occurs that is typical of PML. So that's the classic triad. You can do in situ hybridization and pick up JC virus proteins, which stain dark here. And then if you're uh, lucky enough to have access to an electron microscope, you can actually see the virions replicating within glial cells. If you don't have a brain biopsy, then you have to make a presumptive diagnosis. And that's usually done based on the typical appearance, the typical MR scan appearance, uh, showing with or without gadolinium, showing these uh, T2 weighted images that are intensely positive in the subcortical regions, a CSF that is positive for JC virus by PCR, and then that, that's enough usually in most cases to make the diagnosis of PML. The CSF analysis usually has very few white cells, a mildly elevated protein, uh, but JC virus uh, is detectable in most patients by PCR. It depends what PCRs you're using but the ultra-sensitive newer ones have a sensitivity that's over 95%. In, in the case that I presented, it was negative, 
uh, and some of the older uh, assays had a, had a sensitivity level that was only in the 70s. Uh, low copy numbers are seen in patients with iris, and, in the, and you can also find low copy numbers in, rarely in patients who don't even have PML. So treatment, uh, unfortunately there is no good treatment for PML. There's no proven antiviral therapy against JC virus. Uh, mirtazapine is often pulled out in people who are doing poorly because it binds to one of at least two receptors that JC virus uses to enter cells, the 5H2TA receptor. Uh, and there is this small study with an N of 25 where the survival rates were higher at a year in people who were treated with mirtazapine versus those who weren't. That was not statistically significant, I think, because the study only had 25 patients in it. And then there's some recent in vitro data that mefloquine, a drug we use for parasitic infections, uh, has some in vitro activity against uh, PML, and there are currently a study, an international study that's ongoing, but there's no uh, results for that yet. Most of what we do when we try to treat PML is just improve the immune system. So if people are HIV infected, just put them on antiretroviral therapy. And if they're not, but are immunosuppressed for other reasons, see if you can back off of those treatments and allow them to mount a, a CTL response against uh, the virus. Prognosis, well, there are factors associated among HIV patients with, uh, with improved outcomes. Those are those patients with higher CD4 counts, those patients who have contrast enhancement on imaging studies, have a low JC virus uh, detected in their CSF, low being less than 100,000 copies. And if people have a detectable JC virus cytotoxic T cell response, that's not a clinical test, but a research test, then um, they have a more favorable prognosis. Outcomes in the Swiss cohort for uh, in the pre-heart era, the one-year mortality was quite high at uh, 82%. In the post-heart era, it's uh, uh, only 37%. And uh, the, of those people that do survive their illness, a third will be completely normal, and two-thirds will be left with some uh, neurologic deficits, sometimes quite severe. PML iris, so uh, PML iris might be present in uh, almost a quarter of patients who have PML and HIV. It uh, occurs, obviously, after the initiation of antiretroviral therapy. It can uh, be the initial presentation of PML in those that have, you know, maybe occult disease or before they were going to present uh, with neurological symptoms, or in people who already have PML and then their symptoms, their symptoms accelerate when they get started on antiretroviral therapy. The time frame for the development of PML iris is all over the map, as early as one week and as late as two years after starting uh, treatment in, in uh, a couple of case reports. Radiographically, the difference is that you'll see more contrast enhancement and more brain edema features that are not typical of PML without uh, PML iris. And JC virus by PCR in the CSF can be negative. You're mounting an immune response and controlling the HIV replication, so it makes sense that you might end up with undetectable JC virus in the CSF of individuals with PML iris. Histologically, the same uh, features that you see without iris, except now uh, you'll see infiltration with lymphocytes. Uh, and the treatment options uh, are quite anecdotal. There's just case reports about holding antiretroviral therapy. I found one case report of three patients uh, where ART therapy was held and two of them uh, did better when that uh, was done. And then case reports again of steroids that were pulled off the shelf to treat PML iris. So nothing more than that. And then there are some other rare uh, JC virus diseases besides classic PML. There's this granule cell neuronopathy, uh, infections of granule cells of the cerebellum. Don't ask me what granule cells are, I, I don't know. Uh, and it can occur with or without typical PML. Uh, it's, a, it's a diagnosis that's made by biopsy, and patients will present with cerebellar uh, dysfunction, but patients with classic PML can also present with cerebellar dysfunction. So I think this, this biopsy is really restricted to those that end up getting a biopsy of their cerebellum. JC virus encephalopathy is not something you would expect because it's a white matter disease. It, shouldn't, it doesn't infect neurons, but there has been one case report of uh, an HIV negative woman who presented with encephalopathy and seizures and was found to have infection of her, uh, of her neurons on biopsy. And then, again, case reports of uh, JC virus meningitis um, in a few patients who um, had a thorough examination and couldn't find another uh, viral explanation for their aseptic meningitis. So these are unusual diseases that you might encounter, but much more likely just the typical demyelinating disease that we see with classic uh, PML.